In this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the biggest mistakes that people make whenever they first try to learn blockchain or any other programming language for that matter. Nearly everyone makes this mistake at some point and it causes so many people to get stuck and just wanna give up. But I'm gonna show you how you can avoid it entirely and if you've already made this mistake, I'm gonna show you how you can fix it step by step. So if you wanna save months or even years of frustration, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this whole video. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you wanna take that next step towards mastering blockchain, you should join my free training over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So what's this big mistake that nearly everybody makes? And if you've already started learning blockchain, like maybe you've made this mistake already. Well, it's this, all right? It's getting stuck in what I call tutorial hell. It's basically just like doing tutorial projects over and over again and never really graduating beyond this to gain real world skills. Now I call this, you know, a mistake and it doesn't mean that you're a bad person if you make this. It's really common. And, you know, also, like, don't think that I'm saying tutorials are bad either. I mean, clearly I put out a lot of them on this channel, but they're not the end goal, all right? You know, building real world projects and solving real world problems, that's the goal. So I'm going to show you how to get to that goal today um, and how to avoid this problem if you uh, are just starting and how to get unstuck if, you know, you've already, you've already done this. All right, so let's see how we can deal with this. And let's break it down step by step. Okay, so step number one really is to define what the actual goal is. Like, what are you aiming at? You need to know that um, if you're gonna be working towards this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up here on my screen. Um, you know, we've got tutorial hell here. This is where everybody gets stuck. Um, but let's see, what's the actual goal, the actual destination we wanna get to, all right? So let's say you start here. All right, so learning. And you don't wanna get stuck here. <laughs> What's the actual goal? All right, so let's put goal here. So you want to not go here, right? Instead, you want to go here. So what is here? What is the goal? What is the destination you're actually trying to get to? Well, I said it just a minute ago, which is to actually build real world projects and solve real world problems. But how can you define that further for you, okay? What I would say, your goal should be that you want to conceive of something in your mind that you want to build and then actually write the code uh, to build it. That's what the goal is. And if you can do that, you've effectively escaped tutorial hell, in my opinion. So how do you reach this goal? Well, that's where you know step number two is gonna come into play. All right, so really at this point, you want to pick something that you want to build. You know, if you want to escape from doing tutorials, uh, you have to move on to where like, not everything is just completely mapped out for you step by step, all right? So what I would suggest is, you know, picking something that looks kind of similar to something you might've done in a tutorial, um, but, you know, not the same. Like, actually, you must be able to blaze the trail a little bit yourself. So what you could do is take like one of the tutorials on my channel uh, and start, you know, building upon that and start thinking of your own features. Like that may be a good way for you to get started. And then like once you can do that, maybe you can go on and, you know, just conceive of an entire project all on your own without the help of any kind of tutorial and build it from start to finish. But maybe a better goal is to start with something that you've kind of followed a tutorial on and then just build off of that. So. If you can't think of anything, I'm gonna give you an idea here, all right? And I actually gave this idea to somebody inside my program, Blockchain Mastery University, um, because they asked this question on one of the Q&A live streams that we did inside there. They're like, hey, how do I get unstuck? And that's one of the reasons I'm making this whole video uh, is to kind of you know, uh, give you some of the same advice that I gave this person and also like help you find a way to do this step by step, okay? So if you want a free app idea, I would say do something like a voting app, all right? But build upon one that I've already done. So I've got this pulled up on my screen here, right? This is a voting app where I show you how to build it with smart contracts on the blockchain. So for example, you could take this and start adding features on top of it. You could do things like require people to register to vote, 
Or maybe you have like some sort of timer um, for the election uh, to where people can only vote within the specified time. Or maybe even you require people to hold tokens on the blockchain in order to vote. Okay. You know, you could even take this tutorial and mash it up with another tutorial I've done. So like, you know, I have a tutorial where I show you how to code your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum. I've got that one pulled up my screen here. So you could create your own token and require people to hold that if they want to participate in the election. That'd be a way that you could, you know, sort of synthesize different things, which will also help you learn how to build things on your own without the step-by-step -step, uh, help from a tutorial. All right, so that's really step two, which is basically picking something that you want to build and then, you know, you have to figure out what the steps are in order to get there, okay? So, for example, like let's say you want to build a voting application where somebody has to have a token in order to vote. Like I'll pull this up my whiteboard here. Let's kind of just talk about this, right? So you have to kind of break it down step by step, right? And say, you know, must have token to vote, all right? So what do you need in order to make that happen? Well, one, you need uh, a, a function for them to vote, all right? Vote function, and then inside of that vote function, it must check um, to see if they have tokens. So check for tokens, which means you need to understand what function you must call on the smart contract in order to do that. You know, you need a token, and then it needs to get the balance of, all right? And then you need to figure out how to make this function like not work if people don't have those types of things. So this is the kind of thought that you must go through in order to build your own um, applications. You have to just think about, you know, what do I need? Write it out step by step. Do it on paper first before you write the code if you have to. You know, I always suggest breaking it down as far as you possibly can before you actually go write the code if that's what it takes for you to understand. All right, so that's step two. Well, here's step number three, all right? So this one uh, doesn't sound like a step, but it's a, it's a necessary step, all right? And this step is get stuck. Now, I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's uh, an important part of this entire process. Like, whenever you go down this path of being completely unguided by tutorials, like, you're going to get stuck at some point, and you're going to want to feel like you're, you need to bang your head against a wall. But you must actually welcome this pain. <laughs> uh, because, you know, as the old saying goes, there's no pain, there's no gain. Uh, you hear people talk about that a lot, like when they're lifting weights or something like that. Well, the same is true when you're learning a new skill like programming, all right? Especially a difficult skill. So it requires a lot of mental work. And your brain has to go through this pain of not knowing something uh, before it can really know it a lot of times when you're getting programming because the nature of it is just bumping into walls, getting unstuck, bumping into walls, getting unstuck, especially at the beginning. So unfortunately, you must experience this in order to grow, but the good news is it exposes what you don't know. And whenever uh, what you don't know is exposed to you, you have to treat that as a learning opportunity to gain that uh, knowledge and get past it. But that takes us to step four, which is the most critical step in this entire process, um, and that's to get unstuck, all right? So here's the million dollar question, like how do you do this? So this is definitely one of the hardest parts, all right? But if you can crack this part of the problem, then you've really solved the problem, okay? So there are a few different ways to get unstuck. All right, now way number one is still the hardest, but it's the most important to develop, all right? You have to de develop this to some degree in order to really succeed as a developer. But the best way to get unstuck is to get yourself unstuck, all right? So how do you do that? I know that sounds kind of impossible, um, but you do it a lot of different ways. The first is trying to really understand why you're stuck in the first place. All right, if you run into a, an error in your code, there's probably some sort of error message and you must understand how to read that error message in order to find the answer to it, whether it's on Google, whether you're asking someone else in person or online in a forum, something like that. So the better you can formulate your question, the more likely you are to actually find an answer. So for example, uh, somebody the other day said to me, hey, my smart contract won't compile. But they didn't really give any reason why. They didn't even give me a stack trace. So like, for example, if your smart contract doesn't compile, um, you have to read what the error message is in your terminal. And one way to go about getting yourself unstuck on this is take that error message and put it into Google. And then once you find that error in Google, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the answer will be right there, but sometimes you have to dig further and further, right? Sometimes, you know, you'll have to follow links that'll say, go look at this thing, go look at that thing. And it can be kind of a rabbit chase. Um, but 
going through this will help you get a lot better at finding the answers to your own questions. All right. And there's lots of other places you can do this. You can look on forums, like you can go on GitHub issues, and there's lots of places you can get feedback. So at the end of the day, you know, especially when you're just starting out, like you're not going to be able to get yourself unstuck from every single problem. All right. I totally understand that. Um, but I wanted to talk about that one first because the more you can develop that skill, the better off you will be. And so many people just want someone else to fix their problems. Um, but if you can learn to fix your own, uh, you know, th that the more the better. Okay. So number two is to ask other people for help. Okay. So this looks like, you know, trying to find another developer or somebody who, you know, understands this stuff. So the first place I would look on is online if you don't know anybody, right? You look on forums, you can look on Stack Overflow, GitHub issues, and lots of other online communities. You can go to in-person stuff like meetups, conferences. These are all different ways you could potentially find someone uh, to help you get unstuck, all right? And trust me, I know this is a, a difficult problem. You know, it's one of the main reasons that I opened my new program, Blockchain Mastery University, because it can be hard to find someone to help you get unstuck sometimes. All right. So the last thing I'll say is if you have a critical problem, like, and you just can't figure it out yourself and you have a really hard time finding someone else online who can help you out, maybe you don't have a friend as a developer, maybe you're just all on your own. At the end of the day, you can just hire somebody to get you unstuck. All right. So there's lots of ways to do this, but probably the easiest one for you if you're watching this video uh, so get on a website like Upwork.com. You could just find a freelancer who's competent with the technologies um, that you need. So, you know, for you, if you're just starting out, like you probably don't need the most expensive expert uh, to solve your problems. A lot of times you can find someone who's still relatively new to help you. And this person's probably going to be priced uh, more affordably <laughs> for you uh, as a beginner. All right, so I know that was kind of a long explanation on how to get unstuck, but there's lots of different ways to do it. It's kind of abstract, so it's sometimes hard for me to just like talk about it on camera. Um, but that should give you an idea, all right? So um, let me talk about step five, which is also Im very important. <laughs> so I'll pull this back up on my screen here. Uh, step five is really, really important. It's uh, repeat. <laughs> all right, so basically... You have to repeat this process over and over and again in order to eventually develop those real world skills to be able to conceive of something in your mind and build it, all right? Basically, you like figure out what you wanna do, then you get stuck, <laughs> and then you know you try to get unstuck. All right, and then basically it's just this cycle. Do it, get stuck, try to get unstuck, and then, uh, you know, you just keep on doing this over and over and over again until the skills kind of just come into play. And then eventually you are able to uh, acquire the skills. But then once you've repeated the cycle over and over and over again, like you've gotten stuck and then you've gotten unstuck, each time you get unstuck, you have this valuable knowledge that makes you strong as a developer. It's like going to the gym and lifting weights and then finally you can, you know, lift more weight than you could before. It happens slowly over time, but eventually you build up this strength, this mental strength to be able to solve problems and build things. And this is exactly what it takes. Like go try something, fail, try again, try, fail, try again, succeed, try, succeed, try, succeed, try, fail, succeed. You get the idea over and over and over again. All right, so I hope that helps, all right? That's my uh, insight on how to escape this problem of tutorial hell that just about everybody falls into at some point or another when they're trying to learn blockchain, trying to learn any programming language for that matter. So I hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you want to take that next step to mastering blockchain, you need to join my free training over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.